eight on the recovery truck build. Don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty bored of this thing now. So I had a comment the other day about on an older video saying that they someone didn't like the silence in the video and I didn't really like look into it or think much about it at the time, just thought it was a bit weird and then posted the video yesterday and had a few comments about the bits of the video with no sound in them. Yeah, they're, they're, I've basically got a problem with my uh, editing program or something. Like there shouldn't be any bits of the video that don't have sound. Um, all the sped up sections should just have the sound of the sped up video, which is like how I've done loads of my other videos and it's always worked. But for whatever reason now, when I export the video, it's exporting the, all the sped up sections with no sound over the top of it. So um, yeah, don't really know why that is. It's uh, I'm a complete moron on a computer. So the reason I did the sped up sections is because I like the fact that you've got the sound, like the sped up sound in the background. So if that's not working for whatever reason, um, then I'll just do a time lapse and put music over it. But it's weird that it was working fine before, but who knows. I'll try and fix it anyway. So today, just basically more welding. Weld this front on. It's gonna be the first job. And then I'm gonna get all my tie down points welded in. Hopefully that steel will be here pretty soon for those last little bits. I try and get some better shots of the welding as well because I know a few people have said they want, want to see the actual welding a bit more. So I'll try and do that. I'm just capping off the end of these boxes. Little tip for when you're capping off the end of stuff, make your cap the size of the inner, inner edge of the box. So inside diameter of that box so that when you cap the end off, you, you're leaving like a um, valley to, to fill up with weld. Don't cap it, so it, cut it so it's the same size. Put it over the end and then weld around the top because then you've got, you know, you'll have to grind a lot more weld off to, to get a flat end of the box and then the, you've got the risk of the cap end splitting off because you, you just weld, you're grinding all of your weld off. So if you've got like a nice, if you've got a nice fit with a valley, the weld sinks all the way in and then you only have to give it a little clean up with a grinder after and it'll look good. So basically, when I sand it, I just sand and keep the grinder on that flat plane there first. Do all the flat planes, keeping it basically parallel to that. And then grind the end off flat, and then just round the corners over. You know, that took, for how long it takes to just cap something off, I just think it's, it's just worth doing. I think it just looks a lot better. She's on there. I get quite a few people asking about uh, the settings I'm using for different jobs and different bits of work. 
and uh, saying, can I give you the settings? I mean, which I can. Um, so that, for that welding that on there, I'm set at 20 volts and probably eight and a quarter, just over eight meters a minute on the wire feed speed, 0.8 mig wire. That's on the transformer mig. Um, the reason I always say that it's like pointless me giving these um, parameters is that every machine's different. Like I've got three different machines here. They all require different wire and voltage to get the same looking weld. So you really need to learn how to set a machine up, which is, I've done a video, I'll put a link at the end up. MIG Welder Settings for Dummies is how to work out what settings to use and how to find the right settings. So have a, get, have a watch of that and then you should be able to, you know, work it out for yourself really because you do need to know how to do it. I'm just going to cut the edge off of these uh, hooks just so that the hook is as close to the outer rail as it can be. one in. I'll probably uh, do a couple of welds from underneath as well just for an extra bit of support. So now I've got to go through and uh, do the rest. Alright, so I've mounted these so that they're um, like flush, flush fitted, and then because I wanted this front one a bit further forward, instead of putting it on the back of here, I had to just make up a little um, piece of angle to uh, support, just to give it a bit more support. And these are obviously coat, some sort of zinc coating on here, so anytime you're welding anything that's got a coating on it, electroplating or, or paint or anything, you definitely want to be wearing a proper uh, respirator for it. So I'll pretty much wear this um, all the time when I'm welding, so if I'm welding all day, I'm wearing it all day, and it's pretty miserable, but Gotta be better than uh, dying of lung cancer. So I beveled these really well so that I didn't have to grind too much weld off. And then I'll get a couple of welds underneath uh, as well. And then once the alley's on, it's got a hole in it, you know, I'll be able to drill these from underneath. We'll stick a couple of bolts in there as well. All right, it's caught to three now. My steel still hasn't turned up for this, so it's not looking like that's gonna turn up today now. Um, but this did turn up. Bought a new grinder. The um, on off switch on this is still works, but it won't lock down, stay on, which is annoying. All 
made in Germany. I take it back, we still just turned up. So yeah, this was this is 900 watt, same as my Dewalt. But this is a few years old now. Yeah, 900 watt. When this was brand new, it's just super noisy and really rough to you. Like, it just felt really rough when you're using it, like a lot of vibrations through the handle. And in comparison to my Makita one, which was very quiet and smooth, ran very smooth, but I drove a van over that and ruined it. And then I've got, I've got this Bosch one, which I just picked up from the local tool place because they were on offer like 35 quid or something and uh, the donkey who designed it had obviously never used a grinder in his life and put these ducts in here so basically all the dust that comes off of what you're grinding gets blown straight in your face while you're using it so you just get peppered with uh, grinding dust and bits of metal which is awesome first thing in the morning so I hate that thing. Let's try this one out. Put a new one on there. It's got a soft start so it doesn't jerk in your hand when you turn it on. And it's smooth in your hand. Right, you can compare, this, compare that to this. The DeWalt Bone Shaker. So yeah, let's give her a go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's a uh, nice grinder. Feels nice in the hands, uh, nice and smooth. Not sure it's quite got as, as much power as the DeWalt, but I'd much rather be used that just because of how much smoother it is and uh, less noisy. So I think I paid 65 quid for that. I'll put a link at the bottom if you want to check them out. I think I paid more than that for the DeWalt, but that DeWalt is like two or three years old now. Got my diagonals tacked in. That's some quite tricky uh, corners to mark out those because of the angles. So I've got six of those tacked in, ready to be welded. You probably wouldn't think those six little pieces of box are really going to be doing that much, but the way they're positioned, they're really going to be um, helping support this outer edge more than you would think. So I've got these original side marker um, off the pickup bed. So I was thinking of having these underneath sort of here. There's four of them. So I don't want to drill any holes into this box because I don't want any, any water to be able to get into it. All right, so tomorrow all I'm going to be doing is welding those other pieces in. I've got to make the other ramp, which is exactly the same as 
the first one and then just basically clean everything up and degrease it and get it ready for um, some primer so it's not really going to be a, any point in me making a video of that I don't think tomorrow um, it's just not really going to be very interesting let me know if you want to see a video of it being painted I don't really think that's very interesting either so I was thinking just maybe wait until it's painted and then do the last video of just bolting everything on and um, putting the aluminium on uh, fitting everything up and testing it out but I mean if, you, if you're interested in seeing it be painted then uh, yeah let me know but other than that that is it for this one so cheers for watching I appreciate all the comments and um, everyone watching it I genuinely didn't think it would get that much interest this was kind of kind of just like something I needed to get done for myself before I started the uh, next project because I want my channel to now be doing builds rather than little welding videos I want to actually do um, builds from start to finish so I wasn't initially gonna gonna film this but I thought you know while I'm doing it I might as well do it just to get some content going so so yeah that's it for this one cheers for watching see ya